This video is going to be five tips for new players that are starting this game and hopefully it will help you out to progress a lot easier and also just to get to grips with the game a lot better. The game can be very very daunting when you first play this because not everything is very very clear so let's get that out the way. First things first you need to optimize your settings and also make your minimap bigger. When you're in game you can press plus and minus to actually increase your minimap size I would suggest you go as big as you possibly can and then scale back from there to a comfortable size for you. The bigger the minimap, the easier it is to see where the enemies are and how you can react to, depending on what is going on in the game. If you are in game and currently not fighting, then you should always be looking at the minimap to find out where the enemies actually are and where you need to go to actually assist your team. Apart from that, the general settings that I would advise is if you go into here and then go to graphics, one, you can enable colorblind if you are colorblind and that might help you out. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a super expensive computer or a complete potato. If you do run a complete potato, though, then I recommend you use this SD client rather than the HD client and then just set everything to like however your game can handle because the SD client in this game is actually a lot better for actual clarity rather than the HD one. That being because the HD client does add all the extra effects and stuff like that. So here are my settings that I would recommend for new players. Go something like this and you shouldn't get any extra effects going on that will be distracting to you. Especially extra effects in sniper mode. This should always be off no matter what computer you have. The same thing with grass in sniper mode. Take that off. Don't have it. It will just hinder your performance. And when I say hinder your performance, I mean your personal performance, not the actual graphics performance. Now in the sound settings, you can actually mess around with a lot. Um, music in battle, I recommend you turn it off because it can just be more distracting than anything else. The exact same thing for the ambient sounds. They can sometimes be annoying because you think that something is happening to the, to the right of you, like an enemy tank is pushing, but then sometimes it just isn't. So either disable this completely or you can put it around about 40 to uh, 60%, which is what I have it on. Now in your controls, do not have your sensitivity like a, a stupid amount like this, right? Halfway is absolutely stupid. If you have anything over like 400 DPI, this is way too much. I'd recommend you go as low as you possibly can. I go for one tick in sniper aim and then five or six ticks in uh, arcade aim. Now, just because this works for me doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. It all depends on how much mouse pad space you have, etc. So find something that suits you, but don't go too high. Now for your reticle settings, it doesn't matter too much. This is more personal preference, but I would recommend you have the dot as your actual crosshair. It just helps out a little bit more and it can be less distracting than the, the A shape or the arrow uh, shape. One thing that I will say is that in sniper mode, make sure you choose diagonal and make sure this is at 100% because it has a little tiny indicator line here, which you can then line up with where you're getting shot from. And as long as you're standing still and you're watching a shell come in, you can then line up perfectly and roughly estimate where the enemy is. For the outline, make sure it is on simplified. And then we have the penetrable area as texture or you could have fill. It depends. I like to have this on texture because then you know that this is semi shootable. So you can go through it. And then impenetrable area is going to be on fill to say that, nope, you cannot go through that bit. Now for the markers in the game, I would go for either HP left or HP left slash total. For new players, I'd recommend HP left slash total because you can then get a good understanding of what tanks have what health and you can then learn from there as you go. Get rid of everything else. All you really need is the vehicle model, the health indicator and the auto aim indicator and damage received and that is fine. The exact same thing goes for the team. You can either have HP left or slash total and then destroyed. Make sure you have everything completely off. This is going to help you with visibility in the game because you won't have the E75, for example, which is destroyed there above the tank constantly. If you have everything turned off, you can get rid of that. The only thing that you're going to have above the dead tank is the actual icon. Now, in battle notifications, make sure you have the advanced for the type and make sure that in battle events, you turn all of these on with the actual names because the only way that you do it. So down here, the event names. Make sure that's on and then you can get a good understanding of what does what and what is actually happening in the game. For the log, what I'd recommend is that you choose all events and choose everything. And then you can have either received damage at the top or down the bottom here so that you have all the damage that you take at the top and then your damage that you do or deal to the enemy down the bottom. Just quickly for the last little bit on the settings, you can mod this game anything from the wgmods.net hub 
is going to be legal and ready to use in game. I do have a full video on what mods I use. So if you'd like to check that out, you can just click on the channel and then it should be the first video or I'll leave a link in the description and the pinned comment. Now for my next tip, learn what tanks you can meet and what are going to cause you issues in the game. By this, I mean, when you are first starting out, let's say that you go down the American tech tree line and you get to the M3 Stewart. Now from tier one, you can only meet your own tier. So you can only meet tier ones. From tier two, you can only meet tier two and tier three. And from tier three, you can only meet tier three and tier four. From tier four, this is where plus two matchmaking starts and you can meet all the way up to tier six, which is extremely dumb, but that is, uh, that is a can of worms I do not want to open on this video. So let's say that you're on the M3 Stewart. You would then need to work out what tanks you can meet on your own tier and also tier four, and then work out what ones will cause you problems. Bearing in mind, it's obviously a light tank, so it's not really going to be meeting those heavy tanks kind of thing. Um, yes, there are some heavy tanks at tier four, but very, very few. And up to about tier five, the light tank role is more of a medium tank role. Now, knowing about what you can meet is going to be bringing us into our next tip, which is going to be going to tanks.gg and find out all the weaknesses, all the armor profiles of the tanks that cause you problems. I would say that just all the tanks that you can face, but no one's really going to have time for that and no one's really going to do that. Um, except me. The best way to do it is that if you do meet a tank in game, instead of getting incredibly frustrated with the game, Go and have a look on the tanks.gg website and go and find the tank. Find out what the armor model is like and find out what the weaknesses are. Some tanks are going to be very, very stupid, but most of the tanks do have weak spots and can be utilized to actually kill them. As you can see here, this is tanks.gg and you can select the different upgrades available for the tank. So let's say you're only using the middle gun. This is what it's going to be like. On the right hand side here, up on the settings, you can then go for either the base values or the effective values. I would say the base values are the best because if you are just getting into this game, you're not going to have like 100% crew and stuff like that. So use the base values to actually find out about your tank personally. But when looking at other tanks, I would look at the effective values because most of the time other people are going to have 100% crew especially once you get up into the higher tiers. But from this, you can also then equip your tank with what equipment you have and also change the ammo type. As you can see here, it will tell you how much it costs, what the penetration is, what it is at 500 meters, which is really, really important because over distance, the penetration is going to drop. So it's really useful to actually know about that. As you can see, if we're using the normal AP round, we'll get 56 millimeters of pen if it's like right in front of us. But at 500 meters away, we're only going to be going down to 38 pen. So use this to your advantage and find out everything you want to know about your tank. You can also go into this 3D model here and learn about the weak spots on the tank. If you go to the live model up on the top left, you can then go and see in real time what the angles are. And if you hover over it, you'll be able to see the penetration values and what you need to go through certain points of the tank. The last thing that I'm going to say on this is that one thing that is super important, that is overlooked by a lot of people, is gun depression on tanks. Gun depression stat is all the way down here in the middle at the bottom. You have the gun elevation and you have the gun depression. Now the gun depression is how low you can actually point your cannon or your barrel at the enemy. So if you're on a ridge line, for example, and you have no gun depression, you are hardly going to be able to play that ridge line because you just won't be able to get your gun down low enough to actually shoot them. Always check this stat before you go up onto a ridge line and before you start playing a tank because that is super important to know. Now you'll see here also that it says 10 degrees. That is minus 10 degrees because obviously it is depression, not elevation at like this. So anything from about minus 7 to minus 10 is really, really good. And that is decent enough to play on any map and not really have to worry about too many factors. Anything with minus 5 and above... So minus five to zero is going to start causing you some issues. So keep that in mind, have a little look and try and work around that. There are going to be some tanks that you're going to have to go through and they do have bad gun depression, but just try and work around that. But the more that you know about your tank, the easier it will be to play because you know about the strengths and weaknesses. Now, the next tip is going to be on your ammunition and also the crew. Now, one thing that I'm going to say is that do not be afraid to fire premium ammo. This is the one that is going to cost a lot more than your standard round. 
As you can see, this cost 50 credits and this cost 2,400 credits per shell. What you should be doing is taking a lot of normal rounds and then just taking a little bit of the heat or APCR, whatever it might be as your number two ammo. And then you take a little bit of the HE round as well, just for good measure. But something like this as an ammo loadout will be completely fine. As you can see, it costs 27,000 credits. And that's if you were to fire absolutely everything in your tank. The thing is, you're going to need some of these rounds if you want to stay competitive in the game. You don't need a lot, but you need enough to deal with those tanks that do require it. Especially as you go up in the tiers, the more and more tanks that you're going to meet that are going to cause you problems. And if you don't have any of them, you're going to be kind of at a big disadvantage. It doesn't cost gold, it costs credits. Take a little bit, take 10 to 15 rounds on a tank, depending on how much you want to spend, and you'll be fine. Obviously, tanks that have loads and loads of ammo is going to cost you a little bit more, but at the same time, you're probably not going to be going through loads anyway. But just take this as like what you should be what you should be using. Now for the crew, you should have a 100% crew on the tank that you chose at the start when you completed boot camp. Now that 100% crew is really, really useful because you can move it to the next tank and keep going up and up and up all the way to the tier 10. You don't need the previous tanks if you're not going to play them anymore. If you thought a tank was really, really fun, then what I recommend is that you move the crew up with the tank, but then just buy like a 50% crew and just train that crew up playing the tank that you enjoy. Or even a 75% if you wanted to and you have your credit spare. But to move the crew up, all that you have to do is click this button up here, click send to barracks. You can then sell the previous tank, upgrade to the next one in the line, and then select the crew from the previous tank. As you can see, we choose the P43. And then what we can do is go up here, you can click retrain and you can either do it for 60% for free or you can go to 75% for 20,000 credits each. So it's going to cost you 80,000 or more depending on how many crew members are in the tank. This is also really nice if you do have crew skills on the tank. This is also really nice because any crew skills will stay so that you can keep grinding and keep improving the crew as you go up through the tiers. So if you have a tank at the moment that you love, keep it upgrade the tank, move the crew to the next tier, and then buy a 50% or 75% crew for the tank that you just finished grinding. But make sure that you're moving that crew up because at tier 10, the crew is really, really important to be good. It's worthless just buying a crew on every single new tank. And when you are buying a new tank, you do have the option here to actually purchase without a crew. And that is what I recommend you do and then move the crew up. Now, my final tip is gonna be just play the game and treat low tier as your learning ground. You're going to suck. I'm sorry, there is no way of putting it. You are going to suck when you first start playing this game. Everybody did. I did. Every single person I know was absolutely awful. I had like a 43% win rate for a very long time. Like I think I was at like 10k games with maybe 45% wins. It was very bad until I started to learn the game and improve along the way. But if you're watching this video when you're just starting, then you're already a lot better than I am because there wasn't really anything like this when I was starting. So hopefully this gives you some information about the game and learn from your mistakes. If you make mistakes in game, don't just try and blame the team straight away. Have a little look. Maybe you're on your own on an, on an entire flank and the team was somewhere else. If your team is all together in one area, just go with them. Like just let them lemming train into a into the enemy and just be with them and just that you might end up winning through that. But just use the low tier as an experience. Stay in low tier as long as you want to actually learn the game. Because once you get up into the high tier, it gets much more unforgiving. And at least in low tier, you can kind of learn the game and learn about what you should be doing, where you should be going in certain tanks, especially in the mid tier. If you once you master the basics at maybe one, two, three, you can then start to go to four, five, and six and start learning about the different tank classes, especially at tier five. Tier five is where you can learn a lot because you start seeing the actual light tanks have light tank roles. The tank destroyers are actual tank destroyers. You can either get assault tank destroyers or you can get sniping tank destroyers. There's lots of different roles for different tank classes and you can learn where they all go and on what maps. 
So don't get disheartened if you get a load of losses. Don't get disheartened if you have like a 43% win rate, right? I've been there. We've all been there. We all suck at the start. Hopefully, though, you won't suck as long as I did because, well, you're already watching this video, as I said, so you have a lot more info than I did. Anyway, hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, then leave a like and subscribe as it does all help me out. I'll see you all in the next video.